Hello, everyone. Oh, come on now. Hello, everyone. I know we all ate, so there's a bit of energy. Hello, everyone. There we go. You know I me. Mean? The snacks worked out great now. All right. Uh, my name is John Cole. I'm a multi award winning dance choreographer. I'm a CEO of my own company, which deals with PR and media. And I'm the president for the Zimbabwe Choreographers and Dancers Associ Association and the Zimbabwe Dance Awards. I'm a musician and I write music. I know it's a lot of hats, but hear me out. I started off in a very, very, let's call it a dangerous situation for any kid that's growing up in Zimbabwe. I was the vendor before I became the choreographer you see today. I used to sell tomatoes, bananas, vegetables in different locations, Glenora, Glenview, and I grew up in those same areas. And I used to tout, Madomas, 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 a veg. That's what I used to do. Today, I'm here speaking at TEDx Borodale. I usually get a round of applause when I'm done performing, but today we move. <laughs> But ladies and gentlemen, uh, the honest truth is I didn't get here just by sheer luck. I worked hard to be who I am today. I'm persistent. I'm obsessive about the work that I do, not anything else. I'm a perfectionist. I'm meticulous. And everywhere I go, it's about me, John Cole. It's because at the end of the day, what we have as people is legacy, right? Your name is everything. We have the greats like Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan wore a sneaker and he's worth $600 million. That's the greatest thing you can ever do. But soon you guys be wearing my t-shirts, my caps, and I'll be worth $1 trillion. In US. In US. <laughs> I did not throw shade. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, um, I grew up not knowing what it was like to understand what life was about. We didn't grow up with a lifestyle. All I ever knew growing up was suffering, because my granny would take care of us. She was partially blind, and she would do what she had to to feed us. We used to go to school on one plate of porridge. And some people, when they see me today, they look at me and they're like, oh, you were in St. George's, right? And I'm like, no, I went to Morgan High School. But because of who I am today, that's how people see me. And that's a very, yeah, you know, people see you different when they see you up here talking, you know, all meticulous and everything. But the truth is, I had to work to be who I am today. But let's not forget that the future is very different for everyone. I stand here before you as the greatest in dance. I made that choice. It was a mindset. I said to everyone, I'm going to be the greatest in 2004. I remember that day. We're watching the most revered dance movie of all time. You got served. That's how dance became phenomenal worldwide. I remember watching it with my friends, and I said to them, I can do this. The room went silent, and my friends laughed at me. And you know when your friends laugh at you, it's not a joke. It's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. But here's what I did. Two weeks later, I proved them wrong. I started learning how to dance. And every time we started dancing, in 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, 9, we would go to performances because we were dancing hip-hop music and no one knew what hip-hop was. When we used to perform, we'd get called to perform and then suck up and the old man would be sitting there with his newspaper and he's not even watching, he doesn't care what you're doing. But the truth is, we shaped an industry after that. How did I shape an industry? Single-handedly, and it's not a brag, it's an actual fact. I'm not lying. You can go on the internet, 
is Googleable. But I remember one day, before I get into that, I met a CEO, I think for a bank. He, we were performing for their company, and he says to me, who are you? I said, my name's John Cole. And he says, no, who are you? I said, I'm John Cole. He goes, really? Hold up. He goes on the internet. You're nobody. Like legit, he told me, you're nobody. Then I stood there and I thought to myself, what does he mean? And he says, son, come closer. If you're not Googleable, you are nobody. I was like, but I'm that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm like standing there and I'm like, you know, what's going on? He says, if you're Googleable, that means you're reachable. If you're Googleable, that means you create a network and a network. Because anyone who wants something, the first place they go is the internet. And now mama, if they want to buy, you know, a blender, they go on the internet. Where's the best place to buy it? Something, right? So after that, I thought to myself, let me change the narrative. I used to be a dancer before I became the choreographer that I am today. And I used to be in the background. So you, as a dancer, you perform for artists, right? You're there, you're doing your thing, but you're in the back. And I thought one day, I don't want to be in the back anymore. I'm good at what I do, right? It's a God-given gift. So I said to myself, I want to be in the spotlight. Lord, did that just not ravel a lot of people? Because the truth is, when you want to go to the front, you have to bump people out of the way. That's the truth. And that you rattle cages and everybody wants to just, you know, do whatever they feel like doing with you. But here's the truth. When I took up that mindset, when I reimagined my future as the ultimate choreographer in this country, I didn't even know what I was doing. I was creating ripple effects that made sense, not to just me, but to everyone that consumes dance. So I was doing one dance. The first video I've ever done, I offered my services for free. It's called One Plus One by Sebastian Magaja. I went on there, yes, yes, I'm the young guy in the, in the front, you see. From that video, I did another video. But ladies and gentlemen, the breakthrough came when we did Mukoko. With Tamara Brown, yes, I'm behind the dancers, people. It was amazing. But here's the funny thing about that. We were three of us in one room, and we thought, okay, we've got a hit song on our hands. What are we going to do? I thought, okay. So, Amara, you sing, Titan, you sing, I dance. But how do we sell John Cole? So we made an agreement, the three of us. Anytime Mukoko was spoken about, John Cole phone was behind. So every time you heard about Mukoko, Amara Brown, Titan, and John Cole, everyone's like, but he's just a choreographer. No, I'm the choreographer. I created something that went around Africa because everyone loved that video. And that's when everything happened. Everyone started calling my phone. Ah, can you please come through and do my choreography? Can you please come through and do my choreography? But you know, every deal I made with an artist, I want my name to be there. If you're not putting my name, I ain't working for you. Because the honest truth is, I create. You're a musician. I create. I'm a choreographer. Dance is expression. And it, at first, you know, it, it was shaky. It was shaky ground for people. And then I asked for one more thing. Any event that I'm performing, I want to headline. And they thought, this dancer is mad. He wants to headline with Mr. Easy. <laughs> and I said to them, well... I'm worth it, right? Ladies and gentlemen, it stuck. I set up that mindset for people and it stuck. And it made sense. Everywhere you go, any poster, if I'm there, I'm headlining. If I'm on stage, someone took out a lot of money to see me on stage. Companies cry about that. They're like, John, call you expensive. I'm but, but I'm good, guys. Come on now. You know, later on, I'm going to make a group of people at TEDx Bar, they'll dance. That's what's going to happen. Regina's ready, y'all. She's like, yo, I'm ready. <laughs> but the truth is, I didn't get here by myself. Along the way, I had, let's call them good Samaritans. They helped me carve the industry that you see today. People that didn't know what I did or how I did. John Cole, you're good at what we do. Let's give you a platform. Come to our company. Do a dance. Do this video. Do this, do that. But the key element to what I did was two things. Prof 
professionalism and focus. Just now, Alozi, I got a phone call. John, we have a dance video tomorrow. I'll make it happen. As soon as I leave here, I'm going to the dance video and get paid. And, you know. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. I'm appreciative of what I have. I'm content with what I have. But I'm always hungry. I remember 12 years ago, I wanted to go to the United Kingdom. I would text every promoter for 12 years. You have no idea. I am good at what I do. Can I please come? But I will school pizza. But not to pizza, guys. But, you know, it makes sense to people. This year, I got a phone call. John Cole, come to the United Kingdom. Okay, let me go through. I got to the United Kingdom. I did what I did. It was my first time in the United Kingdom. It was a culture shock, but it was amazing. I walked in. I remember one of the incidents. This lady, she wanted a picture with me. She gave me 100 pounds. I want a picture with you. I want to show my husband I was with you. I was like, great. She took a picture with me, gave me 100 pounds. And I was like, great, I'm going to buy sweets. I walk into a shop. I give the money. The lady looks at me and says, we don't take cash. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what do you mean we don't take cash? It's like, yes, sir, we do contactless. I'm like, wow, this is, I got money, but nothing to use it for. Culture shock. But it was, it was okay. My friends didn't tell me that's how it works. They left me to my own devices. But the journey that you see today doesn't come with sacrifice. As creatives, any creative can attest, you sacrifice family time, love, everything. Self-care sometimes, and it's, it's crazy. To be who we are today is a lot of sacrifices to be made. And when you, when you stand in front of people, they'll be like, ah, oh, life's good. Uh-uh, it's not. I'll be w awake at 3 a.m. in the morning thinking of something I want to do at 9 a.m. And it's crazy for people. You play music, you do this. And for me, that's what it is. But one thing I do know, that when you do something, you've got to do it at the best of your ability. Because it's a God-given gift. Some play the violin beautifully. Thank you for that show. Thank you very much. Others tell us about traveling. You need a passport. First time I traveled out of Zimbabwe, it was 2014. I was going to the Philippines, the first time I ever left the country. I got lost a lot of times. <laughs> Nobody gave me the memo. I got lost. Imagine you walking into OR Tambo. It's your first time. I went to the carousel. And I stood there for like 30 minutes. And this lady goes, ah, brother, what's wrong? I'm waiting for my bag. She goes, ah, brother, let's see your ticket. Oh, it's a connecting flight. You go this way, brother. I was standing there. No one told me anything. And I'm just there, right? I went to the Philippines to do a wedding, not anything else, because I did an amazing job for this one lady in Australia. She says, let's come, come to the Philippines. Again, culture shock. We see a lot of things. If you go to Asia, don't play basketball. Don't do anything before you ask how much the price is. They will charge you. True story. But after that, I managed to travel the world. Hong Kong, China, South Africa, Zambia, all these places. The UK, in August, September, I'm going to Poland and Germany. And that's, you know, just go dance, just to dance, just to teach people how to dance. And, you know, when you, look, when you think about it, you're like, guys, I just dance, guys. Because you, you see musicians travel the world. They, you know, Ed Sheeran, Verna Boy, Ja Praiser, you know, Amara Brown, they travel because they've got a vocal ability. But someone is actually paying me to come perform my God-given gift. And that's the most interesting thing to me. It still boggles my mind. I'm like, they really hired me to do this? Yeah, cool. Their money, not mine. But the truth is, <laughs> truth is, though, I'm grateful for everything. Grateful to stand here and talk, speak. But here's the thing about me. When I said all those things that I was saying, I learned a couple of things over COVID. One of them was the internet. If you go on Wikipedia right now, you Google my name, everything looks like some robot did it. But no, that was me. I learned how to maneuver the internet. One of the most greatest achievements I've ever done in my career personally, in my career, 
is to get myself verified on Facebook. Trust me, if my manager was here, she would tell you. It took me 15 months to get verified. Because every time you try to get yourself verified on Facebook, to those that know, then please come back after 30 days. Please come back after 30 days. You don't fit the criteria. But in Zimbabwe, I'm the criteria. But internationally, I wasn't. So I was like, okay, we're going to play this game. Let's do it quickly. So I learned the internet. I did everything I could. And I started doing what I was doing. 26th of May, 2021. Last time, I was tired. I was like, you know what? 15 months of this, I'm not trying to do it again. I applied. 6 o'clock, I woke up. Because I slept, and I, was, I remember it was 3 o'clock in the morning. 6 o'clock, I wake up. I look up my Facebook. I'm like, wait a minute, though. No. Is that me now? I swear to you, asking around in my house, I was doing backflips. And then I woke up and I announced it on the internet. The music industry went mad. How does a choreographer get verified? They all came to my inbox. How did you get verified? $500 for information. <laughs> I mean, I spent 15 months on that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So all that happened, right? And I'm very obsessive about that. You can ask anyone. And I was like, I want my Instagram verified. But we all know Instagram is the Facebook of private school internet. We all know this. They don't just, like, I mean, you could be famous and you can get two likes on Instagram. Two. And we all know this. You can post your most amazing picture, one like. <laughs> and that's probably you, though. <laughs> right? That's probably you. And then you get there, and you're like, okay, cool, this is me. But I'm glad to say, in May, again, on the 28th of this, yeah, of May 2023, I got verified on Instagram. Took me a while, but we got there anyway. We had to buy Elon Musk's site. He loves money. I get it. I love money too. So here's the thing. Everything I've ever done in this industry was not for my own sake. It's for the sake of the dance industry that we have today. I objected to just being a dancer. I wanted to be in the forefront, in the spotlight. And I had to fight so many battles to be where I am today. Because a musician says, why should a choreographer be a headline with me? Well, you're worth it. I'm worth it. You know, without me, you know, your dance video is just going to look like a dance video. 